Okay, let's get started. Thank you all for joining another SDEC session. My name is Adam Greco and I'm with Search Discovery and I'll be helping moderate behind the scenes here. Today, our topic area is related to Adobe Analytics and I'm excited to have Frederick Werner from DHL here to present. Uh, this is actually his second, maybe even third, uh, but I think second time uh, speaking at the SDEC. So before we hand it off to Frederick, just a couple uh, little items I wanna go through from housekeeping. If you are new to the SDEC, we are a free educational community that offers weekly educational uh, webinars like this in about uh, 10 or 12 topic areas. You can sign up for free and if you're somehow got this invitation, but you're not in the SDEC, I highly recommend that you join because then you can get notified in advance of webinars in any of the topic areas that you sign up for. If you are in the SDEC, but maybe you signed up for way too many topics and you're getting too many invitations or not enough and you want more, uh, you could always DM me or email uh, me and I'll put all the information in the chat. And I'm happy to adjust the topics, either add more or remove some. On the next slide, um, just wanted to give you a little update on where we are. Uh, we recently crossed the 4,000 member uh, mark. We're at about 4,060 and today we added a couple more. Uh, we're in 88 countries, we're in over a thousand cities. And in this particular topic area, we are closing in on 3,000 people in the Adobe Analytics area, which is really cool. We do have uh, 58 past recorded webinars. So if you do join the SDEC, you can get added to the Slack group and you have access to 58 recorded webinars and after today will be 59. And what's really cool is we've had over 20,000 views, whether that's live or recorded. So if you are here and you want to join the SDEC, you're more than welcome to just go to searchdiscovery.com slash SDEC and sign up. And I'll put again, I'll put that in the chat. Next, um, one call to action that I would have for you is it makes me very sad. Um, most of you will recognize Dan Levy from uh, the Adobe Summit. Um, just like Dan, I'm very sad that we only have about 68% of SDEC members in the Slack group. That means that that uh, big chunk of you cannot view all of these cool recordings. You can't DM message with anyone who's in your field and you can't see job openings that are being posted. So uh, it takes literally uh, 30 seconds to join the Slack group. So if you aren't in the Slack group and wanna join, just email me at sdec at searchdiscovery.com and I'll also be putting some information in the chat, but I really wanna see if we can get to at least 75% of you in the Slack group. And if, you, if your company can't use Slack, just you, just you know, you can actually join Slack uh, personally on your phone um, or from a home computer. So there's no reason really to, to not join the Slack group. And last thing before we get going, um, next slide, or actually two more things. One, uh, during the webinar, if you have a technical issue or a question about the SDEC, you can ping me in the chat. But if you have a question for Frederick, please use the Zoom Q&A because that's the place we're gonna go to look for all questions in the session. Uh, this session will be recorded and will be posted in the Adobe Analytics channel in the Slack group later today. Okay, and then lastly, um, I have one shameless plug. Um, at Adobe Summit, Adobe was kind enough to let me do a session on this uh, cool new Apollo product that uh, our company has made for Adobe Analytics. Unfortunately, they only gave me like 25 minutes and we got awesome, awesome feedback from people. Everyone was really excited, but they wanted to learn more. So based on popular demand, we are going to do a full hour long webinar that goes into way more detail. So if you didn't get a chance to learn everything, or if you want to check out this new Apollo product that helps with Adobe Analytics implementations, there is a link there uh, for this webinar that's going to take place in June 10th. I'd love to see you there because I'd love to get all of your feedback on what we're building and what you guys would like to see at it. So I just put the link in the chat and then in a little bit, I'll put all the other links I mentioned. So that's it. Now I'm gonna hand it off to Frederick to talk a little bit about customer journey analytics. So Frederick, take it away. 
Thank you so much, Adam, and uh, thanks also for having me again, because it's uh, actually the second time in the SDSC for me. I've uh, been here last year already, and it's been a blast being here, so thank you for inviting me again. So, that's me on the slide, at least uh, well, some years ago, but uh, I don't like having pictures taken of me, so uh, that's quite an old picture, but uh, you can see me in a newer version of myself on the recent Adobe Summit recordings as well. Um, so that's where most of the people uh, got to know me over the years from my blog at fullstackanalyst.io, where I write a lot about Adobe Analytics and customer journey analytics topics recently. And just like last year, I've created a secret page on that blog specifically for this session. And there I actually collect all the relevant posts and also other helpful links. And you can find that at this URL at the bottom here or by scanning this QR code. But don't worry, I will show that again on the last slide with the questions. So this is what we're going to cover today. Um, first, I'm quickly going to show you how I personally got to work with customer journey analytics. And then we will go over what I think the product actually is. Um, after that, we are then going to give this session a bit of a different spin by first talking about why Adobe Analytics actually is the better tool for web analytics today. And only after that, show a bit of why CJA may be the better tool in the end. And then coming to the big finale, we'll ask the magical questions of whether you should buy it or not, and if you buy it, what it would mean for you personally and your team. So starting with my personal story, then this is where most people have gotten to know me from. And as I post about Adobe Analytics a lot, and I cover things like how to create next and previous page reports and workspace, how to do statistical analysis and also other fun things. And one of the awesome outcomes from that was that Adobe actually built some of the functionality that I explained with calculated metrics into the line graphs in Workspace, where you can now actually add trend lines out of the box. So you're welcome for that as well. And another crazy thing that I did last year when that was still possible was that I actually peer pressured my old team to dress up as Analysis Workspace at the Carnival in Cologne. So that was quite fun as well. But then towards the end of last year, I learned about customer journey analytics. And since there was a lot of value for my old company in that product, I went ahead to actually become the first European customer of customer journey analytics. And this, of course, had some impact on my blog, where I then suddenly started writing about why customer journey analytics is so great for me and how to create even more value with things like query service and other fun stuff. So... I even published four posts about Query Service on the Adobe Tech blog if you want to learn more about Query Service. So that is actually Adobe supported. Those guys helped with that. And I also covered the latest new customer journey analytics features. So back then last year, some people even approached me personally and asked when my blog will actually return to the regular Adobe Analytics content. And I found that quite funny at the times, but that kind of shown how much time I spent actually with the product. So let's very quickly just talk about what customer journey analytics actually is from my perspective. And it sits right in the services area of the Experience Cloud portfolio of tools. And for some reason, while Adobe Analytics is called an application, CJA is for some reason not. And what's important for today is that we will only cover the Adobe Analytics and CJA part of platform, but not any other parts like CDP, for example. So looking at it in more detail, then this is how I think about customer journey analytics. So it's quite similar to how normal Adobe Analytics works in regards to the data model so that it can only report on actual user activity. It's very important to know. And that's because its engine is practically a better version of what Adobe Analytics has today. And it can handle basically any data that is available in experience platform within a data set. So there are some things that are very similar to analytics too. Like, um, for example, we can use something that is very similar to classifications, but actually it can now finally again handle numerical values. So num numerical classifications are back in customer journey analytics, but then also customer attributes. And those basically can handle the same amount of uh, complexity in the data as every other dimension in, uh, in AAP. And saying that most users will still spend the most of the day in the same familiar workspace interface or the mobile app, because those are 
basically the same. And they will hardly notice any difference between the normal analytics and customer journey analytics. And since it's a new and cool tool, most of Adobe's backend innovations go into CJA no nowadays. So for example, the Dimension Builder sneak from Trevor Summit session will be a CJA feature. So, and before we then go into some more detail about the tool, I want to show you some of the differences in naming between the tools. And starting with the backend, you will notice that report suites are now called connections and those still hold the actual data. But in CJA, they cannot be accessed directly by any user. So unlike analytics, you always need a data view on top of the connection, which is like a virtual report suite on steroids. And if you're interested in stitching your users cross device, you can do that by either buying Analytics Ultimate, which will give you cross device analytics as a feature of that, or by using customer journey analytics built in cross channel analytics feature. So the branding is on point here, I think. And both of those allow you to define a custom user ID that is then used to stitch users cross device. And that is both a feature of Adobe Analytics and customer journey analytics. Then in terms of organizing the actual data, you now only have one type of dimension. So not um, like EVAS, props and list VAS like in the past, but those type of dimensions are basically, um, basically, basically universal and they can hold any definable value like strings, dates, URLs um, to hold all of your data and don't have any limits on those. And the containers in CJA are also named a bit different. Um, and actually those can also be renamed, which is quite unique. So if you have, for example, call center data in CJA, you can just go ahead and rename, for example, sessions to calls, because that would be a session in the call center world. And then last but not least, nothing really changed in the front end. So your users will still have an easy time getting accustomed to the new tool if they use Adobe Analytics today. So let's derail this usual sales pitch then for a second, because now I want to tell you why, in my opinion, Adobe Analytics is still the better tool today for web analytics use cases. And one thing that I was always missing from Adobe's material was a side-by-side -side comparison of analytics with CJA. And on the side, we'll start with the things where CJA has an advantage. So like I said, the engine that actually crunches the data in the backend is quite comparis uh, comparable as CJA is an evolution of the old one, but much better, of course. Also, this gets rid of the limitations that we know today, like, for example, having limited dimensions and metrics or unique values in a month. Also, we can now use attribution not only for metrics, but also for dimensions, which is super useful. For example, if you want to break down one dimension with, uh, with one attribution model with the same dimension with another one. And those are some of the advantages of customer journey analytics. But Adobe Analytics still got quite a few advantages as well. Specifically, it's purpose built for web analytics. So it has a lot of special features to handle that environment very, very well. CJA, on the other hand, will just take whatever AEP gives it without any processing. And then, of course, we have interfaces like Activity Map, which only really makes sense in web analytics. And those are also not, the, uh, sorry, not there yet in CJA. And if you want to integrate with other tools as well, AP is a very open platform, but it's not as widely adopted yet as Adobe Analytics. So the easy to use integrations like advertising analytics, where it actually configures your ad account, only work in Adobe Analytics for now. So in summary then, analytics is still the current industry standard where CJA is like the new cool kit that needs to find some friends first. But at least one thing that is very, very common is that the building is quite similar. To, so to give that previous slide a bit more of a visual representation, this is how I think both tools compare in terms of the value for digital analytics use cases. And it's true that the new engine provides a lot of value, even more than the old one. But most of the actual value, in my personal opinion, comes from the other out-of-the-box features that Adobe Analytics offers today. So what that then means is that those features that you can see on this slide are not in customer journey analytics yet. And the yellow ones on this slide are on the roadmap, but the black ones are not. 
So if you rely, for example, on analytics for target or marketing integration via uh, advertising analytics or even other integrations like with Decibel, as we've seen last week, the, you can't do that yet in customer journey analytics. And that is, uh, that is, of course, only partially Adobe's fault because those other vendors still need to shift to AAP and CJA as well. And also you're going to lose some of the special metrics and dimensions that rely on, for example, the visitor profile or special metadata like the visit number, entry and exit dimensions and so on. You can build it to a certain extent yourself, but it is not included as it is in Adobe Analytics. So again, CJA is not only for web analytics, so those specific features may not be a top priority amongst others, uh, because those were maybe more general use cases compared to those. So I know that might have been a bit of a downer. So now let's turn this around and do the actual pitch for CJA for web analytics. So as you might have heard already, you can organize your data in a way more flexible way in CJA. For example, you can just pull in some data from Adobe Analytics in yellow here. And you can pull that into a connection, then into a data view and into a project in CJA. But where then the magic starts is if you, for example, combine that with data from other reports, which like this red, uh, for example, mobile app data here. And you can just pull that into the same connection, so into the same report suite within CJA, and then basically create data views that hold both of those uh, data sources as if they have been in one from the get-go and then create multiple projects from those. And if you also have the right IDs in place, you can actually stitch those user journeys and watch your users move from app to web, which is again, pretty, pretty cool. So as a new feature, then we can even add data that was not collected by Adobe Analytics, but the new web SDK also called Alloy, um, together with your old Adobe Analytics data into a connection as well. And that is also true for other type of data and you can pull uh, basically anything into platform like those many, many call center use cases that you can see in Adobe's own marketing material. So another killer feature for me is that the data that you pull into AEP and then also CJA can retain some of its natural structure. So you don't have to track everything in a flat list of dimensions anymore, but you can actually use whole objects as they are with arrays and nested objects and all those. So what I've done for a past post is actually model my whole client side data layer in the AEP schema and then just pull that as is from the front end to experience platform, which is easy to configure in the launch extension. And this just feels super organic for me because the data can be represented as it should be with that dimensionality to it. So coming to the front end then, you can basically do the same awesome stuff with segmentation and calculated metric that we love from workspace. So I've taken some examples from my blog post again, like for example, if we, you want to do time series analysis or cohort analysis, forecasting, or even that uh, fancy stock analysis style trend detection, we can all do that in CJA as well, but now with any data from AEP and even more, because here I, for example, casually combined two different report suites that both track uh, data from two different websites in AEP. So what we can then see is that since they both use the ECID service, they actually share some user IDs. And we can see that in this left Venn diagram and with platform, we can actually stitch that data using custom identifiers to get even more of an overlap and better, for example, browser and cookie restrictions. And then going even further, we can then use query service. Um, so we can even create dimensions as we always wanted to have them in workspace, like for example, a previous and next page dimension or even full path dimensions. And speaking of query service, there are so many cool things that you can do if you know a bit of SQL because Adobe actually helps us with some custom SQL functions to make things like sessionization super easy, which we then need to get, for example, our visit number back. And for me, this really closes a gap to Google where most companies would use Google Analytics together with BigQuery to actually get the same amount of sophistication. And now we can just do that with Adobe as well, which is super exciting for me. 
And a few examples for some cool applications from my post are those that you can see right now. For, where, for example, I created something similar to the hit depth dimension, which is here, um, but not only on a session level, but also on a user level. So you, you can now see that, for example, the first action in a session might not always be the first action by that user. And you can actually break that down against each other and see what a certain action Play, uh, what, uh, what a role a certain action played in the user's journey. Or for example, why not create the old full path reports that we know and loved in reports and analytics on every row of data. Or here, same thing, but in relation to the current event to see how users move through the page which, with each click. And that's quite cool in my opinion. That's actually the next level of web, anal sorry, web analytics with customer journey analytics. So coming to the admin options then, there's also quite a lot of awesomeness here and um, a lot of that has been covered in the recent summit, so I won't go into much detail here, but for example, in the latest release, we got even more flexibility with the new data views where we can just redefine a dimension as metric or vice versa, and then even filter or exclude values from our data set if we want to. And all that is non destructive destructive after the fact, which is super awesome. So all of those CGA features are super great. And let's get to the big question coming to the finale then. So if you are in the market for a web analytics implementation, what should you buy? And the very simple, completely satisfying answer to that question is it depends. So here are the things that I would recommend you to consider when making that decision. And I hope that I was able to show that in my view, Adobe Analytics still is the most complete and feature-rich solution money can buy today. And it's not going anywhere. There's no sunset date and you don't need to rush things. And that's also true because the market still needs some time to react to those new products in terms of integrations. And funny enough, that also counts for Adobe themselves, as we've seen with the analytics for target example. So on the effort side of things, you may want to consider if you have the resources to actually make the transition to CJA. Because the more features that you're using today in Adobe Analytics, the harder the migration will actually be. But there is a segment of customers which may not use a lot of integrations and a lot of those non-available features. And for those, it may make a ton of sense to consider CJA if you are able to fully use all of its feature. And just a word, whoops, just a word of personal warning. Um, Adobe likes to show those use cases where it's very, very simple to stitch data to like mobile data, CRM or call center data, but they, that may not be true for you. So for example, if you're trying to analyze call center performance, you may not be able to reproduce a lot of the metrics a business expects. Like for example, how many people are waiting in the queue without doing some additional processing on the data. Also, finding those shared user IDs is a whole project on its own, and it's not, it shouldn't be underestimated what amount of effort you need to put in there. So, and this is actually the last content slide, and this is a very personal one, because here I now want to show what does it actually mean to me if my company would decide to invest into CJA. And we're going to cover this from those three different perspectives. So as an end user, pretty much nothing changes if you are using Workspace already today. And that's actually great because the interface is just so, uh, so much like what we use today. So if you are then taking care of the implementation side of things in the client, you will, you will likely use the new web SDK launch extension, but if you're using an event-driven data layer today, it can actually be so much easier to pull the data out of that and into the analytics tool. And if you want to educate yourself, you might want to educate on things like launch server side and AEP workflows because they then will, of course, be more relevant to you in the future. But if you're handling the backend of Adobe Analytics today, basically everything will change for you. And it's, it's certainly a change for the better, in my opinion, 
but still a massive change. And my recommendations then would be to make sure that, for example, your SQL and data engineering skills are really up there so you can make the most of this new environment. And also as Adobe Analytics and CJA have like different versions of workspace, you will still need to migrate a lot of your old projects into CJA. And I really wanted to include this slide to make sure you actually know what is coming for you on a personal level because that's always very important for me. So that actually was already everything that I have prepared for today. And I hope you found this all helpful and maybe I was able to clear up some of the confusion around the product. And if you want, you can, of course, check out the blog page to find all the mentions, posts and links. And maybe we do have some questions now in the Q&A session. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Frederick. You are a wealth of information. And what I love is that you've actually been documenting the journey that you've been on, no pun intended, of <laughs> switching over to CJA in your day-to-day -day life. And there's nothing, in my opinion, better than taking someone who really knows Adobe Analytics like you do and watching you blog about all the things as you learn it. And you can almost see some of the excitement that you have for this kind of jumping off uh, off of the page with your blog post. So it's been yeah. great. Thanks. Um, if any of you have questions, uh, please use the Zoom Q&A now and we'll start going through some of the questions. And we happen to have a celebrity on with us as well who was uh, listening into this session, Eric Matisoff from Adobe. So I have actually added Eric as a panelist just in case there are some questions that you would like to get the Adobe perspective on related to CJA. So. I'll let uh, Frederick be the default, but uh, you can feel free to punt over to Eric if there's a question you you want to. So he so, can't speak up. Uh, he can't speak up until I let him. That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the one and only time. Uh, hey, am I allowed so, to speak up right now, Frederick? <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. so let's start digging into questions. Um, first question: Does CJA replace and improve the GA four uh, with BigQuery data model? <laughs> that, that, that's a very good question to a Google Analytics ex expert, I would say. Um, like my experience is, of course, very limited in that regard. But from everything that I've seen from the Google Analytics data model, um, it's actually quite a big step up if you ingest all of that into both AEP and query service, and then also CJA. So I would say yes, and there's actually a summit session that covered how to pull um, Google Analytics data into CJA, and I would recommend you watch that um, because that will then, of course, be much more Google Analytics focused than I could ever be. Eric, do you have an opinion on that? Um, I do, um, but... I want to try to provide a vendor neutral response there. So um, <laughs> I'll, I'll leave it to, to your answer there, Frederick. Very great. Yeah. So don't want to get, I, don't want to get I, demoted yes. down to just the, just the chat pod again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, next one, um, Lucas had asked, you mentioned data warehouse or something like it as being planned for CJA. Any details there? Mm, not from my end. Um, on that blog page that you see on the screen right now, I actually linked the Adobe page where it's comparing the current Adobe um, Customer Journey Analytics features and what is on the roadmap. And there you might find some more information on that. And that may be something that Eric can actually shed some light on. Well, I feel like I'm providing a lot of value here, but um, I actually don't have a ton of additional information on that one. The um, the most useful and most up-to-date info will be on that link that Frederick mentioned. So you're welcome for that um, additional okay. insight into the Adobe world. <laughs> okay, no worries. Um, so next question, uh, does this mean that Adobe will keep the Adobe Analytics as such and provide CJA as a top up to get more out of data collected in the servers? Mm, that's, that's a very good question. And uh, that one is uh, uh, for sure better answered by Eric. But like from my perspective, 
it's a different kind of tool. So I wouldn't necessarily stay, uh, say it's a step up. Like the engine is, of course, newer and you can do some features that you just can't do in Adobe Analytics today. That's true. Um, but I don't know if it's actually a Adobe intended use case to always pull data from Adobe Analytics into CJA. So that would be what you need to do then if you see it as a step up. And that would also include that you pay twice for your data. Um, and I, I, I don't say that's the intended use case for that. And I see them as totally different tools, actually. But if you are in that, uh, in that segment of customers, you might be um, just the person that gets a lot of value out of customer journey analytics if you're doing your web analytics there. Yeah, and one thing I'll add to that before Eric chimes in is uh, um, Trevor Paulson did a really cool session at Adobe Summit where he actually pulled in Google Analytics data into CJA. And so um, I think Adobe is trying to be very flexible on, you know, really data is data. What data do you want to put in here so that you can get a complete picture of your customer journeys? But Eric, I'll, if there's anything you want to add there, feel free to. Yeah, um, I, I think you both have it right. Um, and the the clearest answer that I can provide from the Adobe side of things is that Adobe Analytics is going to live for a long, traditional Adobe Analytics is going to live for a long, 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 long time. I know we're all sort of in this world of like, ah, DTM was just sunset and ad hoc analysis, like two days before it feels like, and who knows what's next. Um, don't worry. There are absolutely no plans for Adobe Analytics going anywhere in any time in a very, very long time. So um, Adobe Analytics and CJA, both now listed as applications, Frederick. Um, Thank you. And uh, you'll be uh, glad to be able to access both for a long, 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 long time. Okay, um, let's do one quick one. Um, are there any character limits in dimensions in CJA? Mm, I would say no, I haven't hit any yet and I tried really hard. Yeah, Eric, do you know, I haven't seen any character limits as well. Um, I did try copying and pasting my whole book in there, and it's a it's my favorite dimension in CJA. <laughs> okay, so that would be a no. <laughs> um, and there's one comment in here that says, um, you know, is CJA the future, and does that mean AEP is the past? Which I don't think it does mean that because AEP is pretty new. But I do think that leads to a question where I think this person might be going, which Frederick, I wonder if you could answer is, I've had some people be confused on the difference between CJA and AEP, Adobe Experience Platform, because they do look very similar, and they're using a lot of the same kind of backend functionality. But could you give like a layman's explanation of how you would explain the difference between CJA and AEP? Yeah, so from my personal perspective like AEP is the new experience cloud just as a just as a general term as a container to actually contain other things so if a company says we're using AEP you don't actually know what the hell they are doing with it right so um, that's pretty much the same as if you are going to say we're using experience cloud like which part of that you are uh, you using analytics target or whatever so the difference, I would say, is that AEP is kind of the container and it provides some basic functionality like query service, it stores the actual data and holds on, onto all of that. But then CJA is the actual tool that does something with that. And there's very little in AEP that actually does something with your data on its own, but it's all like the, like the framework and the base for all the services that are then on top of that. Not services, applications alert, but yeah. And related to that, someone had asked a question, do you need AEP to use CJA? So um, I don't know, Eric, that might be a better question for you. Like when you buy when you buy CJA as a SKU, my understanding is I thought you get kind of a little bit of AEP, but can you explain how that works? That's right. Um, so there's more than just a little bit of confusion out there around experience platform branding. And um, if you're confused by it, know that you're not alone. The, um, the there's a couple of good things here. First of all, experience platform is kind of a brand and a product. 
which is why things are, are a little bit confusing. So for example, you have access to launch, which literally everyone that has an Adobe ID and, and a product has access to, then you've got a slice of experience platform technology for free. Um, to answer the question though, um, when you buy the CJA SKU, as you mentioned, Adam, the, in, the most important pieces of experience platform come with it in order to make CJA work. Because as, as you both talked about, CJA is built on top of experience platform. Um, so if you want to get some data into CJA, you actually pass it into experience platform and then it's accessible in CJA. So that's super important. Um, experience platform is not the past, it's definitely the current and the future and CJA just simply sits on top of it in terms of analyses. Um, and then, so what you'll get with that CJA SKU is the ability to ingest data, to connect data to, um, to Adobe and non-Adobe data sets, um, run SQL and query on top of it the way that uh, Frederick loves to do. And one day he'll have to teach me what, what a select star means. Um, and um, then on top of that, there are additional pieces of experience platform that you can buy in terms of enabling machine learning or activation through the uh, real-time CDP, et cetera. So, you, um, so there's, Think of experience platform as a cake and uh, everyone gets a little bit of cake for free. And then with each product you purchase, you get more slices of the cake and that cake is multi-layered and delicious. Okay. Now you're making me hungry. It's lunchtime. <laughs> so Eric is going to close his ears for a second while Frederick sure. dances and tries to answer this anonymous question. Um, <laughs> do you think AEP is a fully baked solution. I find it half baked. For instance, we cannot do session syncing on a hybrid mobile app as in an app which has both native and web views, they are recorded as different unique visitors. So what say you, Frederick? <laughs> so um, I would say AEP like in the interface and all that, it feels very new and some parts feel newer than others. Is it robust and reliable? Yes. Did I have any problems actually getting my data in and out of it? No. Um, did I see some error messages on the front end when I tried to do things? Definitely yes. And like there needs to be a lot more documentation and all that. And Adobe knows that. And some of the things are not that intuitive yet as with the other product, just because there's not a lot of experience there. So I didn't have any problems that actually stopped me from doing something. And once it's actually in CJA, it just works like a charm. And all that uh, Adobe Experience Platform has to do is collect the data, store it, and then hand it over to CJA. So for this use case that I've shown today, I would say it's very, very much usable. It's, uh, it's not the most mature yet in terms of it doesn't always feel that well polished but it can still provide a lot of value. And towards that actual use case that you described, like I'm, I'm a bit puzzled because that should be possible and not only with CJA, but just with like normal Adobe Analytics as well, because like handing over, for example, an experience cloud ID from the um, native part of an app to the web view, that is basically a pretty much uh, run of the mill use case from my perspective. So that should work. And if you're having problems with that, then you might uh, need to talk to client care because from my experience, I didn't have any problems with that. Yeah, and you can also, you know, if you want to ping some folks in the Slack group, there may be some people, um, you could put a discussion out there and maybe, or I would recommend you go to measure Slack and put something out there. And I'm sure someone has tackled what you're mentioning. But in Adobe's defense, what I'll, I will uh, oh, go ahead, Eric. Uh, I'll, I'll try to clarify. Um, I think that the anonymous attendee is asking specifically about the experience platform web SDK or mobile SDK. So more around um, data collection rather than experience platform ingestion or analysis or customer journey analytics. That's my guess. Um, and so I think that with that in mind, um, that they're, they're kind of talking about like the append visitor ID to method for the experience cloud ID. Mm -hmm. um, and with all of that said, um, I think that it is 
certainly a solution that has use cases that are not yet supported. We are 100% trying to make those as clear as possible and as public as possible. So we actually, if you check out the web SDK um, documentation, you'll see a link of use cases that are currently supported, not supported and being supported soon. Um, and so that, that should be helpful for you as you're considering, should I migrate to this um, experience platform web SDK and the experience platform edge configuration, all of that kind of fun stuff. So um, if that's what the question was about, then hopefully that answer is, is helpful as well. Okay, awesome. Um, so we have a couple minutes left and we have questions that are coming in fast and furious. Um, <laughs> Many companies um, already have AWS with Clickstream data. Why wouldn't we use that space for free instead of CJA? And how does uh, CDA compare to CJA? <laughs> Like, like Adobe branding with analytics is just a wonderful word. Yeah, that's, that's really true. So it really depends on the use case. So if you have it in AWS already, um, you might have it for a very, very specific reason there. And I would still say that pulling it into experience platform, if you have it, for example, in S3 is really, really simple. And analyzing that data in CJA will, from my personal experience, be so much faster and more intuitive and user-friendly than anything that you can do uh, in the Amazon world. So I would say that still holds a lot of value if you have the right use cases for that. Um, but that is pretty much an architectural question. So that is something that you um, might take from a bigger perspective as well. But for analytics, I would still say go CJA. It's the best thing you can do to your data. Yeah, the, the, the biggest difference between analyzing data in AWS versus pulling that into CJA, um, which by the way, we have a, a source inexperienced platform. So you can essentially just start flowing that data from AWS into experience platform for CJA. Um, but the big, the big differentiator there is going to be workspace. Um, that's, that's a big one. And then with regards to CDA versus CJA, there's um, a helpful uh, Spark page that I'll post in the Q and A that I think if you scroll all the way to the bottom, it does a nice little comparison of CDA and CJA and any other CAs that we have. Okay, cool. Um, so a quick power round. Uh, my company has a lot of offline conversions. It seems like CJA is well suited to ingest that data. Yes, uh, if you want to take your offline data and combine it with online data, um, as long as you have an ID to tie it all together, that is what CJA is for. Um, Andy asks, can CJA provide cross-device marketing channel analysis? Sure. So like the thing that you do is basically if you, if you enable cross-device by stitching your data together and you enable the, like the, um, for example, the attribution IQ settings on those marketing channel dimensions. Yeah, sure. Definitely okay. possible. Um, next one is uh, can CJA, does CJA use the same ECID or is it another declared ID? Can be anything you like. If you have ECID, I would recommend to use that. Could be anything that you want. Is the SQL syntax on query services standard or is it proprietary in any way? Is there any higher level syntax to be used there? Pretty much run of the mill SQL, some Adobe defined functions, and it's following the, um, the Spark SQL standard. And then Chris asks um, how CJA and its accompanying analysis workspace compares to BI tools like Domo or Power BI. So it's, it's, I would say, a completely different experience because, like in Power BI, you have very, very limited interactivity. You basically need to define each and every action that somebody can use um, in the front. And it is really, really hard for your users to extend something if they want to. So it's a completely different level. So data exploration is so much better in workspace. And I've used Power BI and I love it for other use cases like management dashboards, but uh, for very, very um, different cases. 
Okay, and the last question, Matt asks, um, are there any changes to marketing channels uh, within CJA in terms of attribution and stuff like that? So it's a lot more different, uh, a lot more flexible. You can basically put in anything that you like using Attribution IQ, of course. Um, you can do a lot of things in query service if you put in the work there. And it's not uh, directly comparable to Adobe Analytics because there you have the marketing channel processing rules. Those are not there anymore in CJA because the data doesn't get processed at all. And you can basically build anything that you like in there. There's no limit to how you can process that data. Okay, one last one popped in. Um, can CGA be seen as a solution for cookie deprecation where IDs will change across friendly domains or be lost after a day if a customer can get a user to authenticate? Definitely, yes, very much. And then last question came in is around pricing. Uh, pricing, I would, I, we always like to stay away from pricing in <laughs> conversations like this. I would just talk to your Adobe rep. Okay, wow, that was exhausting. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, and Eric, thanks for pitching in at the last minute, uh, totally unprompted and unscripted. Um, and Frederick, <laughs> as always, thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and thanks everyone for joining another SDEC session. We will see you next week. Thanks, y'all. Thank you so much. Take care, everyone.